Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Welcome to another episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, today we have a question from Marshall. Marshall asked, what's the best lens to use in each scenario? Thanks for the question, Marshall. I really like how you phrased this. You asked, what's best in each scenario? I get questions every day about lenses, and what most people ask is, what's the best lens? And the truth is, there isn't a best lens. Lenses are sort of like cars. There are literally hundreds of different types, and they're used for all different purposes. And we all can agree that a Ferrari is a nice car, but is it the best? Well, not if you own a landscape company and you need to haul lawnmowers, weed eaters, and fertilizer around. For that, you'd need a nice micro Ford F-150 pickup truck. And as nice as that Ford truck is, I'm sure the senior center wouldn't want to use it to take its residence on a field trip. <laughs> well, the same is true of camera lenses. Sure, an 85 1.2 is a terrific lens. It's like a Ferrari. It looks great, it's expensive, it's fast, it's perfect for shooting portraits. But if you're a photojournalist, it's probably the worst lens choice you can make. It's heavy, the focus is slow, the angle of view is narrow. It's like using a Ferrari to haul lawnmowers. It's just not a good idea. So instead of asking what the best lens is, let's talk about the best type of lens for each scenario. In the past, we've talked about how our lenses can change the way our photos look. In episode 12, we discussed shallow depth of field. In episode 55, we learned about hyperfocal distance. In episode 14, we talked about aperture values. And in episode 60, we learned about angle of view. Well, these are all important things to consider when buying a lens, but there's one thing we haven't talked about yet, and it's called perspective. Specifically, we need to talk about how our choice of lens affects compression and distortion. So let's talk about those things, and then we'll put everything together to answer our question. All right, we're gonna illustrate these two principles, compression and distortion, using two different lenses, a really wide angle lens and a longer lens. We're gonna start with the wide angle lens. I have a full frame Nikon D3S here, and on the front I have a 14 millimeter wide angle lens, and it's got this crazy angle of view. In fact, when we look from the camera, the, the lens can actually see all the way over here to this side of the studio, and it can see all the way over here, all the way to this blue stool. So we can see just all kinds of stuff here, a really, really wide angle of view. That's why it's called a wide angle lens. You can see all four of these uh, light stands, and we've set these up sort of as a point of reference, and you'll understand that a little bit later on. The other thing to understand that's really important is how close our lens is to our lamp. Now I've set this lamp up in a very specific uh, way. On the back of the camera we have a grid and I'm gonna make sure in both shots that this lamp takes up the same amount of space in the frame. Now the, the crazy thing is from the lens to our lamp it's about a hand width uh, between those so less than a foot for sure and I could even get closer if I needed to because this doesn't fill the entire frame which is sort of crazy. So I'm gonna take a picture of this and show you how this really distorts the shape of this lamp. But the other thing to understand is what it looks like behind the lamp. So I'm gonna go back over here and we're shooting this at F22 so we have really extreme depth of field. And so our shutter speed's really slow so I'm using this timer here. So I'm gonna take a shot and there we go, there's our shot. So take a look at this image and you can see the distortion and also notice all of the different poles and the, the studio in the background of this. And now let's compare that to a longer lens. All right, for our second setup, what we're doing here is we've used a longer lens. In fact, you can come over here and see that we're using a 200 millimeter lens. This is a 70 to 200 and I've set it on 200 millimeters and I framed the lamp exactly like I had before. So using the grid on the back of the camera, I made sure that the lamp was taking up the same amount of space as the wide angle lens. Now there are a few things that are changed dramatically. The first is the angle of view. In fact, if we look at the angle of view from the point of view of the lens, it's just coming right to the sides of this lamp. So we're not seeing the table anymore. It's cutting it off right above the lamp. And then the background is changed considerably as well. So the angle of view is coming over here. It's getting just a little bit of this stand and just shy of this stand. And so we don't see all of the set and all the background and all of the studio like we did before. So we really cleaned things up. And so we almost eliminated all of that clutter. Well, there's another really significant difference between the wide angle lens and the longer lens. 
and that is the distance from our lens to our lamp. Now you can see here that from our lens to our lamp, it's over six feet instead of you know, just a hand uh, width distance from our lamp to our lens. And because it's the distance from lens to our subject that changes the perspective, this is really gonna change things. So instead of having things all distorted where this lamp looks all wacky like it did before, it's gonna do the opposite. It's going to compress things. It's gonna make the background look like it's closer to the lamp and it's gonna flatten that lamp out. Now to really understand that, it's better to see than to describe. So I'm gonna take a picture of this. So I'll come right over here and just like before, I'm gonna snap a picture so you can see exactly what this looks like. Well, you can see there's a big difference between the first shot that we took and the second shot that we took. The first shot has a lot of perspective distortion, and the second shot has a lot of perspective compression. Now, in practical terms, we would use these two things to our advantage. No matter what lens you use, anything placed close to the lens is going to appear larger than things in the background. With a wide angle lens, this is exaggerated and things in the background are going to look stretched out and out of proportion, which makes them a bad choice for portraits. Noses look large and because of the wide angle of view, backgrounds get really messy. But we can use longer lenses to get farther from our subject and this reduces distortion and provides compression. Our backgrounds look great and noses return to their proper size. Longer lenses are great for portrait work. The narrow angle of view and shallow depth of field also help to isolate our subjects. Now this works great for people, but it also works great for other subjects like wildlife. You can use wide angle lenses to intentionally exaggerate a feature like an outstretched hand or the very cute nose of a dog. You can also use the large angle of view on a wide angle lens to capture the beauty of nature. All right, well now let's put it all together. Remember, I'm giving you generalizations. These are guidelines. There are no hard and fast rules in art. So here are my recommendations for the best lenses for each scenario. For scenic photography, wide angle lenses are considered best. They have a wide angle of view, extended field of sharpness, and distortion that makes the outdoor sky look even larger than life. For wildlife photography, telephoto lenses are best. They allow you to get close to wildlife without physically approaching the animals. The depth of field is shallow, so you can focus your viewer on the animal and eliminate the background clutter. And the compression is also great, so animals look great in their own environment. For wedding photography, you'll probably need two lenses, a wide to medium zoom with a large aperture and a telephoto zoom with a large aperture. A lens combo like a 24-70-2.8 and a 70-200-2.8 is a common choice. The 24-70mm will allow you to shoot the reception and all of the pre-wedding preparation, and the large aperture will allow you to shoot in low light conditions. The 70-200mm 2.8 will allow you to shoot the ceremony without having to be too close to the bride and groom. For portrait photography, a lens that's 70 millimeters or longer is usually best. Many portrait photographers choose the 70 to 200 2 8 because it allows them to eliminate distortion, narrow the angle of view for uncluttered backgrounds, and get great compression. Well, there's another very popular lens, and that's the 50 millimeter f1.4. You'll get some distortion, but the shallow depth of field and the price of the lens make it a great choice. And it also allows you to shoot in very low light because of its large aperture opening. Well, you have a lot to take into consideration when you're buying a lens, and we don't have time to go through every single scenario here. So to make it easier for you, I've posted my lens choices at the Adorama Learning Center. Now I've made selections based on scenario, budget, and camera brand. Now for the link to the Adorama Learning Center article, just look in the description of this video, and I'll be updating my recommendations periodically. So if you have a suggestion about lenses or scenarios, you can send your suggestions to askmark at adorama.com. Well, thanks so much for joining me today. Remember, if you have a question about photography, you can send it to me at askmark at adorama.com, and I just might use it in an upcoming episode. Well, I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.